Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are y'all doing? It got all cloudy outside again. Might get some more rain. <coughs> Excuse me. That's okay, though, that it's cloudy. I can still get stuff done, and the sun's not out, so I don't get a sunburn. Um, bunch and bunch of news stories had come out last night. Um, the video that I put out yesterday about that prophecy, uh, I have been watching the news stories. Mm. Excuse me. I've been watching the news stories to see if anything uh, points directly to what they were talking about yesterday, uh, about yesterday or the day before yesterday, about Gantz and Netanyahu <coughs> bearing the uh, burden of prime ministership together. Oh, man. Um, I haven't found anything yet, so I'm just still looking. Um, I've still got people asking questions about that video. Uh, some asking my opinion do you think the rapture is going to happen at this time because of I don't know I said in the video I don't know a lot of it hinges on the timing of the stuff that was said in that prophecy and that's if that prophecy is true so I don't know I do know that everything that we're seeing points to it is this time frame it is this year and um you know, it, it, he said that the war in heaven will happen on Rosh Hashanah, which is in September. We have all that time before that. So we're seeing confirmation of this year. If some other things come up and some uh, certain things prove true, then we could see an even smaller time frame. But uh, it's just everybody's getting confirmation that, that this is the year. Uh, so, you know, we're going to keep digging through details until we see answers. And a lot of people, I lost a bunch of people yesterday because um, they don't like hearing about the rapture because they're tired and everything, and that's fine. I don't have any ill will towards anybody. It's just that we're commanded to watch, and we're going to keep watching. And, you know, we're going to keep searching and looking and mainly let the Holy Spirit lead us to scriptures and to uh, video ideas of stuff to share with you guys to help build you up. And not everybody's there. Not everybody's ready for that. Not everybody, they're at the point where they're offended by it, by the rapture. They're offended by videos talking about the timing of the rapture. And uh, they don't want to partake in that anymore. Well, that's fine. Skip past the video. But it's important for us to cover all aspects of what's going on. And he said, Paul said, comfort each other with these words. Or no, was it Jesus that said that? To comfort each other with these words. You know, that it's coming. It's very close. And a lot of people are going the other direction. And that's a shame because the rapture of the church is such a beautiful event. And not only is it beautiful, but it's important. Everything that happens in the tribulation must... It all hinges on the rapture of the church happening. Because that starts the resurrection. That Jesus started it because he's the first fruits, but that starts that harvest going into the tribulation. Um, so it has to happen. It must happen. And I've done a bunch of videos on it and shared a ton of scripture on it that, that show that. That it is a very specific standalone event. Um, somebody the other day was talking to, talking to me about some stuff in Ruth, and I'm going to go back and do a little reading in Ruth, but you see in the book of Ruth a, a very clear description of the same thing. And before the harvest, the main harvest came, there was, or at the beginning of it, was that wedding event. Uh, and then the bulk of the harvest came in. So <clears throat> we're going to keep studying. Um, today, though, I'm going to catch up on some more stuff for the millennial reign of Christ, uh, digging into um, more into Isaiah, as we got some pretty interesting chapters popping up, um, and uh, see where that leads us. But this morning, we're going to pray Psalm 2. And I picked Psalm 2 for a reason. We've prayed Psalm 2 a couple of times. But I picked Psalm 2 for a reason because the very last line in this psalm applies to the situation we have right now. Dogs must have saw a squirrel outside. But it applies to our situation that we have right now. A lot of people are struggling, and a lot of people are in fear. And, you know, the goal and the desire is to try to build everybody up. 
but you can't get everybody. Not everybody wants to hear what you have to say. Not everybody believes it. And uh, only they know what they only they know what they need to hear to build them up, but they won't tell anybody. So we share what we're given, and they're going to have to find a channel where they can get that. We can't please everybody. We can't make everybody happy. It's, it's impossible. And there's times where I feel like, well, I need to do a better job of making people happy, but then, then immediately I realize I can't. No matter what you do, somebody's going to be upset. Somebody's going to be mad. Or somebody's going to be offended. That's just the way people are. That's the nature of human beings. I'm actually in a conversation with some on a, another video over on Cross Examined right now. Uh, they're mad because God drowned everybody in the flood. I was like, why are you asking men why he did that? Go ask God why he did that. And then go and learn why he drowned them. And they, the people that lack understanding, uh, calling me a fool and stuff like that. I said, well, the only fool is the person who doesn't do research. If you, want, you have something that you're offended about or something that upsets you that you're reading the Bible, you need to go find out what it means and why it's there. And again, still, I found more people still going on about the eternal hell debate. Can't make everybody happy. All you can do is take the Bible and share the truth that's contained within the Bible. But people are going to get mad and get offended. It is what it is. Uh, if I stopped and halted everything for every person that got offended on my channel, um, I'd never put content out again. It might be a video every couple of days because I would have to custom word the video to make sure I made everybody happy. I, I can't do that. It's impossible. So let's get into some prayer. And it's Psalm 2, the Messiah's triumph and kingdom. And it's the last line that really applies here. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give thanksgiving for the amazing amount of... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Awareness that you have presented to the body. That you've opened our hearts to see your love, to see your grace, to see your mercy, to see the truth in the Bible and in the world today and in the world around us. Father, a lot of people are becoming offended. A lot of people are becoming upset at little things. A lot of people are getting bent out of shape over little things. We know we can't reach them all. But we ask you to help us reach as many as possible. To edify and to build up as many as possible. This is a hard job. I read many of the apostles, many of your, uh, not apostles, many of your prophets in the Old Testament. Didn't hardly have anybody that they could talk to. They didn't hardly have anybody that they were friends with. Because people got offended at what they said. People couldn't take it. They didn't want to hear it. And you've shown me the light. I'm just sharing what you've shown me with them. Father, help us with the right words. Uh, we can't help somebody else with the choices they make, but help us with the right, with the right words to reach the right people. <clears throat> we praise you, we honor you, and glorify you for the immense amount of love and grace that you have shown on us. And I pray that you pour that love and that mercy and that grace into our hearts that we may share it with those around us. We can't be perfect because of this flesh body, but we can sure get close, as close as possible. Father, thank you for all the blessings that you pour out upon us. Thank you for the food and the clothing, and thank you for the way you've set things up during this coronavirus that we can still keep moving forward. That we can still keep doing what we can do. You've protected the believer. You've protected those that are saved. And we thank you for that. Immensely amount of thanksgiving for that. Father, in these end times, in these circumstances that we're in now, help us to do the one thing we need to do most of all. And that's trust in you. And this psalm that we're going to pray talks about that. The Messiah's triumph and kingdom. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in, heavens, in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. 
Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have sent my king on my holy hill Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are those who put their trust in him. And Father, that last line is the one I want everybody to stick with. That they take it to heart and then they believe it and they trust in you. Blessed are those who put their trust in him. That's you. That's Jesus Christ. The author of our salvation. <clears throat> and we thank you this day for that salvation. We thank you for this day. That there may be opportunities that we can share the gospel with somebody. Something. A word. Something. And plant a seed. Many people have uh, talked commented to me and emailed me and asked for prayers for family members that aren't saved. Many of them I haven't heard back from. Father, I pray that you are active in their lives. I pray you're active in all of my brothers and sisters' lives to show them truth, to bring them full circle into trusting in you and to keeping their eyes on you and staying focused on you through these hard times. When the fires of tribulation are active, the, the, the strong Christian, the true born-again believer, stand out among everyone else. Make us those true believers, Father. Make us those pillars, those strong stones built up on the foundation of Jesus Christ to stand when everything else is falling down. That people have something to lean on. And they have something to trust in. And may it be our Lord Jesus Christ and his salvation he has provided for us. We love you, Father, and we thank you for everything that you do for us. We ask you to give us a little more strength to help us make it a little further to the end. Help us to stand tall and stand true. And stand in truth. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. Trust in him. We can disagree, agree, disagree, whatever on any subject, but we must trust in him no matter what. We can have coronavirus, be scared, be terrified, watching our family suffer. Be confident and have your trust in him no matter what. Because the only thing that will see you through any of this is God. The only thing that will save you from any of this is Jesus Christ. And if you're not putting your faith and trust in him, you have nothing. And a lot of people out there are struggling with that. A lot of people out there are confused. A lot of people out there are looking for the answers. The doors to the ark are closing. And they may already be closed. But if it's open, even a tiny crack, people still have a chance and they desperately need to make that decision. Luckily, he's a merciful God, and he will make all instances available for people to get saved, all throughout the tribulation. We read it in the, read it in the Bible. Hopefully, people choose to go beforehand. We do the best we can and put our full faith and trust in God for the rest. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I will see you in the next video.